Uh, good morning everyone, I'm Dr. Priyanka and I'm going to take a prosthodontic lecture today for Resto 1 uh, that is sequelae caused by wearing complete dentures. Coming to the learning outcomes, so firstly we're going to discuss I'm uh, sorry. Okay, we're going to discuss the prosthodontic management of patients with denture stomatitis, gagging, and restoral ridge resorption. Then we're going to discuss the recall dentures. Okay, so sequelae of ill-fitting dentures are divided into direct and indirect. For direct, there is denture stomatitis, flabby ridge, denture irritation, hyperphagia, sorry, yep, yeah. uh, Traumatic ulcers, oral cancer, burning mouth syndrome, gagging, residual ridge resorption, caries, and periodontal diseases, okay, uh, which is uh, the, uh, in concern with the over denture apartment, okay. Okay, coming to the indirect sequelae, that is the atrophy of masticatory muscles and nutritional deficiencies. Okay. Coming to denture stomatitis, so you can appreciate in the photo the redness of where the patient was wearing the denture. That is basically the denture stomatitis. You can see it very distinctly in the patient's mouth. Okay, most commonly we see type one. There are three types. We'll be discussing that in the upcoming slides. So pathologic reaction of the denture bearing palatal mucosa, also called denture induced stomatitis, denture sore mouth, denture stomatitis. Inflammatory papillary hyperplasia, chronic atrophic candidiasis. Okay, so candidiasis can also be associated with the same. That's why candidiasis. Coming to classification by Newton, type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 most commonly seen localized simple inflammation or pinpoint hyper, hyperemia. So you can see like a proper redness in the shape of the denture. Yeah. Okay. Uh, erythematous or generalized simple type so you can see erythematous patches around okay uh, in the type 3 granular type you can see the granular tissue growth in the palatal region which is um, obviously not called for but as the stages advance this is what happens coming to the etiology patient wearing denture both at day and night which is not called for in the denture Insertion instructions, you know that we do not give, or we tell the patient not to wear the denture at night. Second one is trauma. Okay, so if any trauma, any predisposing factors can be there. So we're just coming to the systemic factors, which is old age, diabetes mellitus, um, nutritional deficiencies, malignancies, immune defects, corticosteroids, and immunocompressive drugs, okay? So that can cause it also. Coming to the local factors, so that is dentures, xerostomia, there are many causes for xerostomia, dentures, yes, ill-fitting dentures, or extended dentures, uh, not a word extended, ill-fitting, basically, patient not maintaining the hygiene of the denture, you know, those things high uh, carbohydrate diet in some individuals okay broad spectrum antibiotics tobacco okay coming to the management and prevention measures antifungal therapies advice some mouthwashes and gels also can be advised according to the patient's um, inflammatory changes the second is correction of ill-fitting dentures if it can be done uh, efficient third is efficient plaque control and oral and dental hygiene maintenance removal cleaning and storage uh, number four is surgical management that is type three okay here you can see in the photo that the granulation tissue is there which has to be excised and removed that is what exactly what the photo is showing okay so yes uh, we should wait and tell the patient not to wear the denture and once you wear the denture um, the condition should be healed, the therapy should be complete, and then only you can make a new denture, okay? And tell the patient also to maintain a denture, good denture hygiene, okay? Then only this time it will work. 
Coming to the flabby ridge, so any mobile or extremely resilient alveolar ridge is known as a flabby ridge, guys. Yes, that is what the flabby ridge looks like. So it's mostly maxillary anteriors or mandibular edentulous anterior region. Okay. Due to replacement of bone or fibrous tissue, it can be due to that. Commonly seen, yes. Okay. Anterior part of the maxilla and mandible. Okay. It's probably the sequel of excessive load of residual ridge and unstable occlusal condition. Must be surgically removed to provide good support of the denture. To improve stability and to minimize alveolar ridge resorption. So yes, there are techniques to deal with the flabby ridge which we'll be covering, okay? So you don't need to always excise it surgically, okay? All right, coming to denture rotation hyperplasia. So, okay. So this is the thing you see in the with the denture and without the denture guys okay so tissue hyperplasia of the mucosa sign contact with the denture border also called as ebullis fistuatrum okay fistuatrum uh results from chronic injury by the unstable denture or by thin or extended denture flanges okay so that's why we tell you to have rounded borders we do uh, border molding which has rounded borders. That's how we get the denture borders. That's why we don't have thin and pointed border molding basically Okay, and we do not have or or extended denture flanges otherwise it lead to more like traumatic ulcers and you know ulcer spots Okay So these are the basic reasons surgical excision of the tissue and replacement adjustment of the denture Improves the condition. Okay, so yes hundred percent have to surgically we don't have any other alternatives, okay? <sighs> Coming to traumatic ulcers. So you can see sore spots, basically. So basically, very commonly seen by overextended denture flanges. Yes. Or unbalanced occlusion, guys. So you see it very commonly in the department. And then um, not all the time and not in all the patients, but yes, in a few patients, okay? Predisposing factors are immunocompromised drugs which are used. Um, subsequently may develop into a denture irritation hyperplasia okay so definitely a correction of dentures required you can see it here okay and then you can uh, trim off the work extension you can give some gel for you know the relief of the pain also if required coming to oral cancer okay so it may result from ill-fitting dentures the predisposing factors include heavy use of alcohol, tobacco, and lower socioeconomic status. Okay, so yes, um, rarely seen, but could be. So suspect malignancy if the sore spots do not heal after correction of the denture. Yes, so if the sore spots still are there and they are developing into a hardened structure or a softer structure or a cystic structure, anything it could be a uh... okay so you can see maybe the redness it's kind of denoting that there is a you know burning sensation there okay coming to the etiology sorry okay first the local factor so it can be a mechanical irritation allergy any infection oral habits parafunctional habits okay which can lead to myofacial pain guys okay coming to cystic Systemic, which is very commonly seen that is it's more common vitamin deficiency iron deficiency xerostomia again so xerostomia is important menopause diabetes parkinson's and other medications which can cause that uh psychogenic causes can be depression anxiety and uh, psychosocial stress okay so coming to another sequel which is gagging Okay, so this is uh, in the a normal healthy defense mechanism preventing foreign bodies from entering the trachea. Okay, it's just a response. It's a defense mechanism. Okay, due to overextended borders, a poor retention of the maxillary dentures, increased vertical dimension of occlusion. Okay, so the, these can be many, many of the reasons why it may happen. Okay. So basically, the PPS, the 
posterior paddle seal area of the maxillary dentures or extended it's too thick right so you should keep it thin and you should not have it overextended okay correct and of course the you know that the vertical dimension of occlusion should be if it is high so it should be on point okay so in dentures in where in in old denture wares it may be um symptom of disorder of the git and respiratory passages adenoids alcoholism or severe smoking so these are also some factors which do cause gag okay right okay coming to residual rich resorption uh, these are the basic phases of the residual ridge resorption, which you can see in the photo. So continuous loss of bone tissue after extraction and even after replacement of complete denture. So yes, sometimes we do see it in these patients, elderly patients or patients with some systemic disease, especially diabetes. Okay. So prosthodontic factors are intensive denture wearing, unstable occlusal condition, immediate denture treatment, okay? So these factors also uh, enhance the resorption, okay? So you have to go undergo the pre-prosthetic surgical approach or osteointegration integration techniques can also deal with this. Yes, we do have some impression techniques which can deal with the residual ridge resorption and prosthodontics. Uh, which we can do, but sometimes uh, the surgical approaches are better. And uh, in the other times, we give the um, patient the denture still as he does not want to go for pre prosthetic or surgical approaches. And uh, at least we try to give some stability, if not retention, guys. Okay. Coming to over denture abutments, that is curious and periodontal diseases. So, sorry, that is OD is overdenture. So, over, overdenture abutments are associated with high risk of caries and periodontal diseases. Okay. Bacterial colonizations left unchecked due to presence of the overdenture. So, basically, you have to get a root canal done and then a coping on top or without a coping. So, that's why it's always, as, as, always advisable for the root um, overdenture abutment to have a root canal treated structure rather than just um, slicing it off and you know so because there are ways to make an overdenture guys right so that's why we try and protect the overdenture abutments otherwise the denture will start failing you'll have to get it removed later or they will be mobile they will be curious and then things will not work for a denture okay so how to treat it is adequate plug control application of a chlorhex gel and polishing and any surgical approach if required in certain cases can be used okay coming to the last two um sequelae which is indirect sequelae guys so that is atrophy of the masticatory muscles so how you will find out it's like the wear and tear of the muscles so what will happen is you will see like a reduced bite force chewing efficiency in a denture wearer which results into impaired masticatory function or atrophy okay so if you want to avoid it in certain cases or dentures an implant basically to preserve the bone right is advisable guys but yes there are many times the patient are not going to go through these both of the things so both of the treatment plans so that's why they go for a normal denture and due to a normal denture sometimes also you can see that in the long run there is some atrophy but um it, that you cannot really improve that because the patients are not ready for the alternative treatment guys okay so that is one sequel which we are supposed to know the last sequel is a nutritional deficiencies, okay? So it can be into three types, decrease in masticatory ability and performance, decrease appetite or fixed dietary habits, a generalized state of nutritional deficiency. Okay, so just know the nutritional deficiencies can happen, all right? Okay, coming to the conclusion, guys. Uh, so denture insertion is overall 
um, overview of all phases of treatment. So continues through post insertion adjustment and recall for review. Okay. So first we do a post insertion and then we do a recall visit. Okay. In the recall or a review visit or a follow up visit, we check and try and adjust all the problems which the patient was not able to identify in the post insertion time. Okay. However, unnecessary adjustments and uh, mutilation may lead to complete denture failures. Okay, so you have to take care not to adjust and overdo any of the uh, treatments. So the success of denture depends on co-responsibility and co-therapy between the patient and the clinician base. Okay, so we are supposed to work together and uh, understand the patient's anatomy and perform uh, proper techniques and give proper instructions guys it is very important to know all the post insertion instructions okay and also advisable for the patient to follow and to convince the patient well all right thank you so much for patient listening guys and uh, for any further questions um, I'm at uh, Polyclinic 3, level 20 as always. And um, yeah, and uh, yeah, for this topic, you can refer to any of the complete denture textbooks or a prosthodontic tech textbook, which com covers all the, you know, complete denture and all the other topics. Um, Winkler, Boucher are two authors uh, of which a complete denture book is written by so you can refer to any of those two textbooks or any of the available textbooks okay for prosthodontics okay guys thank you